so happy we alive. With a lot more complexity, in my case, it would probably take me seven to ten minutes to say the prayer non-stop from beginning uh -huh. to end. But I sit for 30 or 45 minutes, typically, and so there's spaces in it, you know? Sometimes a different element of the prayer will stop you and be relevant to you in a certain way, and so you sit, and then in those moments you're silent, and you feel stillness, and then on your good days you feel the Divine Spirit. And that's why we do it. So you've been doing this for how many years? Goodness, 30 years. And it works for you. On my good days, it does. So where are we right now? We are at Ken's old place. Okay. And we're going to visit two people who I rent this place to. Who are slightly controversial in the community because they have dogs and this and that. But huh. they've actually, look, Ken's place is in good shape. They're doing a great job of it. I respect them. He's a great, Ooh. look, he's a great sculptor. Hey, man. Let's definitely get the camera. Job wizards were uh, people that uh, kept their mind and heart on a spiritual path while performing any and all tasks. Is that correct? Well, any and all would be a stretch. Yes, we did in fact try to keep our minds and hearts focused on a spiritual path. And yes, four of us, Peter, Stan, Danny, and myself, David Sawyer, formed a little company called the Job Wizards. And we painted houses, and we remodeled houses, and eventually we actually built houses and designed some interesting houses. How about the Small Farm uh, Coalition of Kentucky? Uh, weren't you associated? Yep, I was the co-director and the editor of the Kentucky New Farm, Go uh, New Farm Gazette, which was great. Wonderful period of my life. A bunch of good people, hard-working people. Some local and some from other parts of the country who settled in mountainous and agricultural areas of Kentucky to create sort of an alternative back to land movement, as you heard. And the people that decry that or diminish that in some way don't really understand how sincere so many of the people were. Most of us who did that have now moved on to other parts of our lives, but in no way does that detract from what we learned there, which is not insignificant, but also some of the stuff we believed in and were fighting for in those kind of alternative years, you know, are popping up everywhere in modern culture. G Diapers, the world's first flushable green diaper company, you know, people taking environmental concerns seriously. There's dozens of examples of certain set of values that have come out of that era, not just with the back of the landers, of course, but with lots and lots of people. So, like a uh, sensitivity to the environment, uh, ecological right. issues. That was really the first massive wave of ecological awareness, systems thinking, feeling a return to community, a kind of eclecticism about religion, spirituality, feeling of being rooted in the earth, I think, is sort of a primary spiritual anchor, and, you know, that's when people were exploring Native American theologies, and getting into sweat lodges together, and drumming circles, and Esalen and hot tubs came up in that era. You know, lots of people from a lot of different walks of life went through a passage from and I would say it's really post-60s. This wasn't the 60s movement. These are the people who lifted off the 60s and the hate scene and all that into something that was regenerative and trying to create a world that we wanted to live in and not just, you know, fight the man or trip out. So, 
What's what's gay? G a i a i s m. Gaia? No. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Gaia. What's Gaia? Yeah. Is that like love of the earth or something? No, Gaia is actually a name, kind of an ancient. I'm not sure if it's Greek. Maybe it's Greek word for the whole system that is the earth. But it, that includes more than kind of the material system. It includes. Yeah, you know, the electromagnetic fields and the biochemical fields and the subtle energies that one might say make the Earth a sentient being. The Earth itself is a self-regulating genius, clearly, you know, an absolute unbelievable genius. And, I mean, all of science is really about studying what this is physics and biology, chemistry, it's genius. And well, Gaia, well, Gaia is sort of a term to describe that genius as sort of a, almost like a collectively self-aware. You know, there's a kind of a fringe understanding of that, which is like Gaia is a separate, or some would say a fringe, a separate uh, entity with a personal self-awareness, I am planet Earth. My own perception is a little broader. It's more just like it's a great intelligent system and we're all part of it and part of a part of it that's becoming more aware of the genius of it and so for me Gaia is just the collective brilliance of planet Earth as seen from space. And, and what, what did you tell those those students at Berea College in, in that uh, speech that you gave just a few nights ago? It wasn't students. The faculty? Mostly faculty and your mom and dad. Presidents and these uh, students. College presidents. Administration. Uh, I told them, basically I uh, encourage the work they're already doing, which is so great, about combining work and learning with an attitude of service. And that just yields results for students, for the faculty, for staff, for the campus as a whole. It helps young people after they graduate from college be better citizens and be better in their career, better in their personal lives, better in their inner life. And then finally, it seems to make a lot of sense within higher education to combine work and learning and service. So 19 colleges were there to sort of check it out, seven who are already true believers and some who are pretty serious believers and some that are still kind of trying to figure it out. Work, learning, and service. Yep. So you built this cabin here. I did. Designed and built. Designed and built. Looks pretty good. Yeah. 1979. We're 30 years. It's held up pretty good. Just today. Okay. June 23rd, 1979. <laughs> I thought I, before I went over there, I thought I knew what they were like. The TV, so. But, you know, that's the way it made. We're back. This is Danny Johnson over here. Yeah. Say hello, not, hello. Not quite the old man of the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Patrick, it's been years since we've seen each other. Yeah, I might be the old man in the crowd. But it's a, it's a good crowd. It's a good crowd to be an old man out.